May I please request Mr. John Laxon and Mrs. Krithi Sanon to launch the third season of the New Zealand Excellence Awards and the New Zealand Taught Masters? <laughs> this is our ginormous poster. Uh, firstly, thank you so much for being here actually despite the Mumbai rains today. Uh, I myself have traveled from Andheri considering there's a bridge that fell there. Uh, but it's really, really nice to be uh, back for New Zealand education uh, and that too this time in, in a college where I've actually shot like a couple of uh, TV commercials so I have like memories with this college, but it's really nice always to be back with students. I think it kind of takes me back to my college days uh, and the time when I was studying. Uh, as she mentioned that I'm an engineer. So education has always, always been a very important part of my growing up years and of my life, I feel. Uh, and it's nice to be here and be sort of a catalyst uh, you know, to help all of you, the youth of today's country, uh, to sort of shape up their ca careers and their futures um, and um, be here as the brand ambassador for uh, New Zealand education. So thank you so much for being here with me despite the rains. Seeing two initiatives today. Uh, New Zealand Excellence Awards. So for our third season running, we are offering a dedicated scholarship to four Indian students who would like to select a New Zealand university for their uh, either undergraduate or in many cases in this room postgraduate with 34 partial scholarships uh, for a variety of STEM, uh, science, technology, education, engineering, mathematics and other subjects. Uh, to study at the total and funding available. Uh, so applications are officially, as of now, open. Uh, so you are the first ones to be able to apply uh, and we'll be continuing through to the 30th of October uh, for applications for the semester one 2019 intake. Uh, so please do go ahead and apply. Uh, they are great scholarships. You'll be hearing about one programs. Uh, our website has been launched today specifically for uh, Indian students who are thinking about a postgraduate whilst you're studying and uh, after your studies uh, for up to three years. Course of the master's degree program, uh, both accelerated and extended program options depending on your career path, uh, so tailored to the speed at which you want to progress through a master's program. Uh, and also, as we mentioned, uh, universities that are ranked in the top 3% worldwide. All of us have really nice memories of college. So is there something special you have? I think uh, college years, I would definitely say, are the best years of your life. And they do not come back. So actually make the most of this. Uh, I really feel that my college years, although I was kind of a nerdy student who used to like really um, I mean, I was not a front bencher purely because I'm tall, so I had to sit at the back. But otherwise, I was really into studies. Uh, and uh, I was someone who, uh, I guess, you know, really wanted to do my best, whatever I put in, you know, uh, whatever I went for. So I've always been like that. And I think education has really uh, groomed my personality. I think today, even though I'm in uh, films and I'm acting, it's got nothing to do with that actually what I studied. But I really feel that as a person, I've become a lot more confident, a lot more aware, a lot more, uh, you know, um, able to sort of make decisions in my life because I've gone through 
a process of educating myself. I've gone through uh, engineering can be really uh, you know uh, drilling. Like you have like exams four times, three times in four months, which is insane. And you really have to be able to take pressure. You have to be able to make decisions in your life. Um, you have to have uh, a sense of awareness. Uh, not only around you but also what's happening in the world you know in in especially in the fields that you're going for so uh, I think college years have been very important of course coming to this particular college uh, as I said I have shot a few ads here so it no takes wow. me back to my even my modeling days and stuff where I've shot ads uh, in this in this very compound here and uh, it's always great to be interacting with students, I think, you know, um, no matter what happens, that, that college life and that, that sort of fire that you have when you're in college, it doesn't change. And uh, it does get me back to my days when I used to, like, even participate in, like, um, in my college dance troupe and go to, like, different colleges and have, like, competitions and stuff and come back winning and feel good about it. Uh, so, yeah, it's great being here especially for uh, a cause, something that I totally believe in, which is education yeah. in New Zealand. You may be looking at a, a career in engineering, some field of engineering, but actually you've got a, a creative streak. You know, you, you like writing stories, you like history, you like politics, uh, and the way the New Zealand uh, university and indeed the school curriculum is designed is that you can combine those various elements into one degree. Um, whether it's a double major or a major and a minor, um, there's a huge amount of... Uh, spoke to them about the education in New Zealand. I think this is something that sort of really attracted me towards it because I remember in my school or college, you know, when you're asked to choose subjects, I'm like, I want to study computer science, but I also want to know what happens in psychology, you know. I also want to do my dancing. So I feel like you don't have as many options at times uh, to choose variety of subjects which are maybe not linked to each other. So I think, uh, you know, not all of us mm. know exactly what we want to do in our lives or exactly what we want to be, you know, eventually. And we want to explore, we want to see what we like as a subject, we want to know what our interest is in. And I think it's fab that we have like such a huge variety mm. and where you can take your major as engineering and maybe uh, you know dancing or any performing arts as your minor which is amazing I, I, yeah. I wish I had that opportunity yeah well with that maybe you would have done a dance here for us <laughs> um, I think that's that's really useful and and to just get those perspective where you can study various types of courses and be sort of future ready and with that I think uh, having Rishabh Shah with us who is a New Zealand, educa um, New Zealand Excellence Award past scholar with us today to just elaborate. Um, Rishabh, what was the difference that you felt when you reached a New Zealand campus? Like how was it different from your education that you got here in India and when you reached um, Canterbury University? Oh, the difference is uh, important and uh, basically it's an applied learning approach that you get to experience over there. And apart from that, you have critical thinking that comes into your picture when you start studying in New Zealand. And there is also a strong collaboration of industry and education. So you have industrial experts coming in and teaching you, which basically keeps your system top notch. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's really interesting. I mean, that just makes um, students quite future ready because you are actually having that industry exposure and um, yeah, I think that's a great way to educate the future who will be running the world tomorrow. Uh, yeah, and with that, um, Kriti, on your future, like you studied an engineering degree and then moved to films, which is a very, very different career and there might be students here who want to go to New Zealand do those two majors where they get uh, acting or performing arts along with a science degree and um, if they were to transition how would they transition from uh, science nerdy 
to a film actress, a successful film actress. So how was that transition? I think it's not about, I never planned it like this. Like yeah, I never true. thought, oh, I'm going to do B.Tech and then I'll become an actress. It's never like that. Uh, I think it's always, you know, you discover what you want to do. And when I was in school, I remember uh, being someone who was very studious and I liked science. Well, my mom's a physics lecturer, so it kind of relates to that. Um, and uh, I wanted to take up science, I didn't know, okay, I said, I like computer science, so maybe let me become a software engineer. I had no idea what a software engineer does. Um, and uh, then eventually I ended up doing electronics and communication, which I liked while I was doing, at least the communication part of the B.Tech. Uh, but I still didn't know what eventually I'm going to end up doing, you know, as, as uh, a daily job as uh, you know my career I didn't know what I would enjoy and that's when sort of modeling happened and uh, I discovered while doing TV commercials that I could act which is something that I had never tried on you know like I said you have like very limited things that you're doing in your school college life because you have those many limited subjects to choose from and you never try to explore in different directions to figure out what you like and what your passion lies in and what would you be really happy doing the rest of your life. So um, when I realized that I could act is when I had uh, you know my mind on it and I was like this is what I want to do and I want to eventually move to Mumbai and try for films um, but at the same time I wanted to complete my B.Tech. I didn't want to leave it half done because I really feel that it's very very important to have an educational degree. Um, I always say that there is a difference between being passionate and being desperate and when you're in, in, in an industry like this which is so competitive and there's so many people out there, I didn't want to be someone who doesn't have anything to fall back on or, or any sort of uh, you know a backbone that keeps me strong. Um, I was passionate about what I really wanted to do, but I knew that that's not the only thing I can do. I can do much more. Mm. I am an engineer and I can always do other things. So let me just put my heart and soul in what I really want to do, but not get desperate and, you know, make wrong decisions in life. Uh, that's how it's happened for me, but I really feel that in general, I really want to advise all of you to never stop exploring, to never stop figuring out what you really like and what you really want to you know eventually do in life um, do a, choose a variety of subjects that interest you in general as a person and you might find what your actual dream is so I think uh, that is something that I really uh, admire about New Zealand uh, and their structure of education because it gives you that room to choose what you really you know feel like exploring I think, you know, it's one life and it's mostly so many years that you want to sort of educate yourself. It's all obviously a constant learning throughout life. But um, yeah, I think, I think just go out and explore is what I would say. Yeah, so I think um, from an engineer to an actress and just an hour back you were a journalist <laughs> um, interviewing Rishabh. So lots of different roles and um, um, Rishabh being an Excellence Awards uh, winner, and um, John, you just announced the third season of Excellence Awards. So that's a massive commitment. Like over a crore rupees has been uh, put into this third season, which is massive. And um, also the Masters, which have gone live today. So I know you've covered a little bit about it, but would you want to just give out a few sort of key points around how this Excellence Awards has come through and how um, you know a lot of Indian students have already found value in it like Rishabh. We have a live example yes, here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Lots of his colleagues and how these students can now go in for masters, um, the specializations that are offered with their various um, you know different subjects to choose from and also tap into the um, funding opportunity through the Excellence Award. So that will be really good for these students considering we are launching it here at their campus today. Yes, yes, certainly. So uh, in terms of the New Zealand Excellence Awards, uh, this is a par partnership between the New Zealand Government uh, through Education New Zealand uh, and our eight universities. 
Uh, so each of our eight universities is committed to co-fund uh, partial scholarships just dedicated towards Indian students. Um, and what that reflects is, is two things. One is the, the growing uh, demand for a New Zealand university education from our Indian students. Uh, we've seen a 20% increase uh, just in 2017 alone of the numbers of Indian uh, the students future ready. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, safety, the variety of courses, the cultures and having the opportunity to interact with you know, different cultures and different uh, kind of people uh, which makes you ready for a global, uh, for global opportunities, for not only having opportunities here but also knowing what's going on uh, everywhere else and being ready for all, all kind of technologies coming in, all kinds of, uh, you know, um, things happening in the world. Um, just on that, John, would you like to talk a little bit about the student experience and the emphasis that Education New Zealand puts on um, the student experience, like when a student from India or wherever in the world goes to New Zealand, there is one part of it uh, around studying at a campus and getting imparted that education, but also the overall student experience and the emphasis that we put um, into that that there is like a really positive experience that a student has and I understand like Education New Zealand like my organization all has a team working on that particular part of the work. Yes, well even if I start from when I was a student, uh, straight away when you enroll in the university you get a whole lot of information about what to expect, what you need to prepare for. Um, right down from finances to clothing to all of those sorts of things um, and uh, through to being welcomed at the airport when you arrive if you're yeah. an international student. Um, and then there's dedicated orientation weeks um, which are a lot of fun before the real study and work starts. Um, I don't know if you'd like to share any stories from orientation weeks. Oh yeah, the orientation is amazing. You get a hang of the universities over there, the people over there. There are so many student advisors uh, which basically keep you in touch with all these particular activities. Each and everything is so very streamlined um, that you can easily imbibe in that. That's, that's one of the amazing things yes. that I've experienced. And, and I think another point to add is that uh, career and uh, education counsellors and even job centres are all located on campus um, so whether you're looking uh, for support to, to work, uh, options for where to live or if you want to change where you want to live, um, financial advice, uh, student support and counselling, all of those things are uh, embedded or, or available across all of our universities. In fact many of them are required by law in New Zealand yeah. to ensure that students have a positive uh, student experience. So New Zealand was the first country in the world uh, to require under federal or parliamentary legislation a code of practice for international students um, which meant that anyone enrolling an international student had to provide minimum uh, s standards of care mm. to ensure that the student experience was a positive one yeah. um, because whether it's a, a New Zealand student, an international student uh, we want people to be succeeding uh, in their studies and their lives so that they can go on and have a positive uh, life experience and also be alumni and advocates for the experience they've had. Mm. So uh, it, it's really central to, to our mission and it's one of the reasons why uh, international education is our fourth largest industry mm. um, because there's such a strong focus on it um, and it plays such a, a positive role uh, in enriching New Zealand's culture mm. um, because we have students from more than 180 countries yeah. contributing their own perspectives uh, and we have student clubs um, from all parts of the world uh, at all of our campuses um, and they make a great contribution uh, on yeah. campus and off campus, it's fantastic. Yeah, I think, sorry, yes.